Update 27.4 is live on PC with Railjack Revisited. But with this video, we will be covering the base game's additions, changes, the Railjack Revisited information will get its own video, which at this point might be unlikely. Starting with additions, a number of Conclave mods have been made available to use in the base game. If players already own the following mods, they can now be equipped without further acquisition, and if you don't own them, they are available via the Conclave or available within the offering store for Nightwave Series 3 creds when Nightwave Series 3 goes live. So for the mods and balance passes they follow. Rumbled is an augment for Atlas's Rumblers. Atlas becomes a Rumbler with rock armor that can absorb up to 300% of max health worth of damage. They also said, please note that this augment did not convert correctly and will be fixing it in a near hotfix, which I'll cover later. Prism Guard is for Mirage's Prism, and that makes it so Prism follows above Mirage with the duration changed to 4 seconds. Purifying Flames is for Ember's Fire Blast, and allies hit by the expanding ring of fire will be granted 4 seconds of status immunity. Power of 3 is for Ivara's Quiver. Quiver fires 3 arrows and consumes 20 more energy. Deceptive Bond is for Loki and his decoy. 50% of damage Loki takes is transferred to decoy and vice versa. Singularity is for Nyx's Absorb. Create a ring every 3 seconds that drags in enemies at 15 meters per second. Recharge Barrier is for Vault's Electric Shield. Allies that pass through have 35% of their shields restored. And then Purging Slash is for Excalibur's Slash Dash, and allies in the path of the Slash Dash have 4 debuffs removed and 100% shields restored. Now for the weapon specific PvP mods that have been converted to PvE mods. Ambush Optics for the Rubico, minus 50% zoom. Brainstorm for the Gracada, on headshot plus 100% ammo efficiency for 1 second. Directed Convergence for the Supra, plus 100% accuracy when aiming. Focused Acceleration for the Tetra, when aiming have plus 80% projectile speed. Shrapnel Rounds for the Merlock, plus 200% multi-shot, minus 66% damage. Skull Shots for the Viper, on headshots, plus 100% ammo efficiency for 2 seconds. Double Tap for the Latron, on hit, 20% bonus damage on the next hit for 2 seconds. Next up we have changes for the Simulor and the Cyanoid Simulor. Increased per stack damage for stacked orbs. The Simulor went from 20 to 50, and the Cyanoid Simulor went from 20 to 80. Increased damage of exploding vortexes. For the Simulor, 75 to 100, and the Cyanoid Simulor, 75 to 240. They've increased the duration of active vortexes to 20 seconds before they explode, unless it is done manually. They've reduced the lifetime duration of a single orb before it explodes, while also saying this allows single projectiles to be used offensively as they now detonate quickly and have had their damage increase significantly. Creating vortexes now happens rather quickly. Shoot four orbs in quick succession to create a fully powered vortex. With this, we also added a max number of active orbs to four, while also continuing, added a max number of active vortexes at a time to three, and increased the orb stack count to reach a fully powered vortex from three to four. With this significant increase in damage and lifetime of active vortexes, and with the added bonus of individual orbs providing more utility, adding a cap to the number of active vortexes and increasing the orb count for max vortexes felt appropriate to strike balance with the changes. Once three maxed out vortexes are active, the Simulor will now default to single shot orbs, with the reduced lifetime of a single orb. With them finishing, there are now more ways to use the Simulor against enemies. They also remove the initial stagger on enemies that would occur on Vortex creation, saying, We remove this effect so that enemies aren't pushed out of range of the Vortex as much, and they also updated the Simulor and Cyanoid Simulor's effects. Now we go to the healing and damage reduction abilities affecting static defendable objects. The E said in a pre-release developer workshop that released after a fix was made to Venari's ability to heal objectives, Quote, we want more healing abilities to work to allow for more synergies to emerge in various mission types. Healing these objectives can serve well as an alternative or a complement to the commonly used defensive abilities such as Frost Snow Globe, Gara's Mass Vitrify, and Limbo's Cataclysm. 100% heals is not what we want to do, so we are instead allowing the effects with some objective-specific adjustments as to not trivialize the game modes. So the changes, what affects it, and what's allowed. Gara's Mending Splinters Augment will affect objectives with 3 health per second for each active splinter. 
Hildren's Haven ability will affect objectives and will provide 500 max shields and recharge shields 80% faster. Trinity's Blessing will heal objectives by 500 health over 5 seconds and this cannot be stacked. Equinox's Mend will affect objectives and will grant shields and heal for 500 over 5 seconds and it cannot be stacked. Vazarin's Protective Dash will affect objectives and will no longer provide invulnerability and will heal for 500 health over 5 seconds and cannot stack. Chorus Kavat Venari will heal for 50 health per second and will be able to work on objectives again. Hydro's Curative Undertow Augment will affect objectives by healing 100 health per 1.5 seconds. Harrow's Penance on objectives will heal but will be capped up to 50 health per second. Oberon's Renew will work on objectives and have a 125 burst heal with 50 health per second. Garuda's Blood Siphon will not affect objectives because, quote, for flavor, they think it shouldn't apply. Inaros's Scarab Swarm will affect the objectives and will heal for damage dealt by swarm projectiles divided by allies in range. Nidus's Ravenous will affect objectives, healing 20 health per second. Wisp's Vitality Moat Heals will affect objectives and will inherit and increase two targets health by 300 and will heal for 30 health per second. Vault's Capacitance will affect objectives but will cap at 250 shields and grant no overshields. Titania's Passive will affect objectives, 4 health per second for 20 seconds. The Sancti Magister will affect objectives but will heal over time up to 500 health over 5 seconds and this cannot be stacked with other players. The Ancient Healer will continue to affect objectives at 100 health every 20 seconds. The Rejuvenation Aura will heal objectives at 3 health per second and Arcane Pulse will affect objectives for 150 health when propped. Damage reduction abilities will also work on static defendable objects. Trinity's Blessing will provide a capped 50% damage reduction to objectives. Mirage's Total Eclipse will provide a capped 50% damage reduction to objectives. Titania's Thorns will not affect the objectives. Gara's Splinter Storm, Ember's Immolated Radiance, Baruch's Desolate Hands, Harrow's Warding Thurible, and Nezha's Warding Halo will affect objectives, but their damage reduction will be capped at 50%. Now for the general changes. Titania Prime has been given her own unique dodge and roll animations that flow better with her floating movement. Instead of having to re-aim at your placed waypoint to remove it, you can now hold G. They've improved the look of rain with deferred rendering enabled in the Plains of Ardalon on surfaces so that they look less like grey, boring puddles. Helmuth Sis can now be removed in the Helmuth Infirmary after one day as opposed to waiting a whole week. You can now sell your duplicate Garuda, Harrow, Octavia, Revenant and Nidus blueprints for 2,500 credits from your inventory. You can now sell Syndicate 10 time restores for 2,500 credits and then increase the status chance of the Twin Gricardas to match their mechanic of firing two rounds at once. They have polished the handless cartwheel and knockback animations from self-interrupt weapons. They've also fixed the knockback distance and slide to be more aligned so that the weapon isn't just standing still. They've changed Grendel's nourish ability description to inflict toxin damage on feasted enemies in Grendel's guard one by one, absorbing nourishment to buff allies. Tap to cycle through buffs and hold to cast. They've also updated the grunge of the Corbu Shorzen to make it edgier for all your shredding needs. Polish the Grattler Heavy Guns fire and reload animations, which also fixes an errant animation that played when equipped. They updated the effects for Corpus Osprey projectiles, improved camera collision against water so that it doesn't penetrate and go underwater as much, improved Mirage's sleight of hand detection of light and dark areas to decide which booby trap to spawn, and they also fixed a bug where the package could use the wrong type of explosion based on light and dark in certain situations. They made some slight changes to the Corinth Prime sound mix. Multiple invites from players will no longer stack the invited receive sound effect to save your ears from increasing volume. If a player sends an invite to someone who has do not disturb mode on, it will now say player name is using do not disturb and will not receive invitations. They reduced the Basmu's firing sound effect for other players. Cora's spikes are now an auxiliary attachment to give players more customization options with Cyandanas. They added support to sword and board skins to have consistent main hand holster positions and scaling regardless of base weapon. This also fixes the Sigma and Octantis shield popping closed and open again when holstering. 
They made updates and optimizations to several weapon effects including kit guns, made minor general explosion effect updates, increased the text fields of the mastery rank up message to better accommodate other languages, updated the Oricon tree mesh and materials to be higher quality. You can now customize your Kavat's emissive color which will affect their tail and eye color, which also fixes not being able to change the color of the fan-like Kavat tails due to it being based on energy color. Titania can no longer play the Shorzen while in Razorwing due to it resulting in a very broken flying state. They improved Lisette previews for the Xyphos and other ships by adding respective Lisette animations, effects, and more. They reduced the Shadoo's projectile brightness effect. Domestic drones will no longer start semi-hidden in the decoration placement mode and they will now be fully visible instead of its previously glowy state. They updated the infested hit and stagger reactions to give players more understanding of when player attacks are landing, and minor tweaks were made to Excalibur's radial javelin cast effect, and they gave it some ground interaction with ice chunks when cast over ice, and other stuff. For general additions, they added a click sound when cycling through zoom options with sniper rifles. For general UI changes, the in-game market has received a refreshed look with the addition of top-level filters. Your chosen UI theme is now reflected when viewing the in-game market, with DE stating, Now that the market uses themes, you can now see more details about items on hover and can tab to see weapon stats. They have moved the market filters to be grouped with the search bar, and they've added a filter to hide mastered items. They added a new tag for new items, and they added a starburst effect to the thank you for your purchase screen. They added a preview button to items in your inventory that will take you to their page in the in-game market, and they also added this feature for prime items in your inventory to learn more about them. They also updated the Relic Pack Relic Content screen when purchased in the in-game market and from syndicates, and it will now show each relic's contents better by being categorized by rarity. They also added common, uncommon, and rare tooltips over rarity icons. The invite screen has a fresh new look and it has been polished with an addition of count of online friends and clan members. They also improved the hover indicator to be clear when selecting from the list. For bounty screens in Cetus and Fortuna, they have added daily standing cap to the screens. The leaderboard screen has been refreshed to apply your chosen UI theme and display information options in a cleaner way. You will now be met with a confirmation prompt when choosing to close Warframe by using the X button in the game window. They've added a Riven compatible items component to the Riven unveil screens when unveiling a Riven and when viewing a Riven via chat link. The trading screen will now prompt you with a warning when you're about to trade an arcane that is currently equipped. You can now search the mod section of the codex via drop location by entering the location in the search bar such as Arbitrations, Nightwave, Earth, and more. Banshee, Excalibur, Umbra, Frost, Necros, Nova, Nyx, Saren, Valkyr, and Zephyr ability videos have been added to their respective arsenal screens, and they've reduced spacing between minimap and objective text when fighting Eidolons.